Welcome to the CC3D video. In this video, we're going to be adding a CC3D atom, which is the small yellow board here, to a flying wing for stabilization. We've already added CC3D technology onto quadcopters, tricopters, and now we're going to add it to a plane. This is a great little device if you want to put in basic stabilization into your craft, and for the sake of 12, 13, 14 dollars, you can get hold of one of these. It's very small, you can fit it inside the chassis already, and then you can set it up so that it will auto level the plane, which makes it great for kind of scale flying or if you're starting to learn or teaching somebody else how to fly. We're going to post this as part of our CC3D video series. I'll put a link to the rest of the videos in the description. I'm also going to put a link into the video that talked specifically about the Atom and how it differs from the main CC3D flight control board because there are a couple of things that you need to be aware of but not much. And we'll also do a link to the APM 3.1 video series. That's the only other flight board on the channel that we've used for stabilization of a plane. And the APM 3.1 is a little board that's about the same size as this full-size CC3D, but it also has the ability with a GPS to do things like fly missions and do return for home. But that's a lot more complicated to install than this great little CC3D technology. And this is a piece of cake to put on a wing or a plane and give yourself that extra ability. So first of all, we'll talk about the connections, how we connect this up to the model itself. We'll talk through the radio setup, because when I first did this, it caught me out a little bit. There was something that um, I expected, but wasn't there, so we need to talk about that. Then we'll actually do the firmware installation, so I'll show you what you need to do to put that on here. Then we'll finish doing the setup. We'll test that the CC3D is doing the auto level stuff properly and that it's moving the elevons on the flying wing that I'm going to use correctly. And then finally we'll do a quick test flight and talk a little bit about tuning. I'm just going to zoom out because I want to show you what this is going to be installed on. I'm having to zoom out quite a way because what it's going to be installed on is one of these. A Hobby King Tech Sumo Flying Wing. Uh, quite a big model and I've got a couple of these and I really, really like them. They're cheap as chips and they take an awful lot of beating. So we're going to pop it on this flying wing and uh, set it up so that it does stabilisation. So the first thing we need to talk about then are the connections. So the easiest way to explain this is for me to put a diagram on the screen. Now this diagram is actually from the ground station control software from OpenPilot so we'll see this when we get into actually installing the firmware onto the board but it's useful to have a look at it and to connect some of this up in advance of powering everything up on the wing. Dead simple to put it onto a flying wing. We have the left Elevon servo going to channel 1, the right Elevon servo going to channel 2 and the throttle to channel 3. We're going to use a PPM receiver, so it's a simple three cables from the radio receiver into the CC3D as well. Despite the fact that we're using an Atom or the smaller CC3D board, the connections to 1, 2 and 3 are identical. I wouldn't recommend actually plugging in the servos before you start setting thing up. I would configure the servos just like we did with the tricopter in software first and then when you're ready plug the servos in and then configure them. I've had instances where the servos get driven hard to the stop if they're plugged in and the output that they're plugged into hasn't yet been configured. So for now I would just plug in the speed controller so that you can power the board and the radio receiver as we go through the setup. I would make sure that you've marked the leads from the left and right Elevon servos as one and two so you know where they're going to be plugged into and it's also while we're useful while we're talking about connecting this up to make sure that you have a Bluetooth adapter handy that you can configure for either the main or the auxiliary port at the bottom. Now I'll link to the Bluetooth module setup video in the description under this video 
because typically when you install this board into a plane, it's going to be hidden away inside the guts of the thing. It's very handy to have a wireless connection to it so you can do things like recalibrate the accelerometers or maybe change the settings or tweak the PIDs when you go out flying. Because it relies on that USB connection and that USB connection could potentially be hidden away inside the fuselage, then it's good to have another way to get hold of the board and tell it what you want to do. Obviously Bluetooth isn't going to be great for doing things like flashing firmware, but having that ability to change things without having to rip everything out of the plane is going to come in handy. So now we've got that set up, we have our speed controller plugged into channel 3, we have our radio receiver plugged in, and we're now going to plug in the USB cable into the computer. We can start to set everything up. But before we do that USB connection, let me just talk about that thing that I discovered when I was setting this up on the radio. Now here is my model for the Texumo flying wing. This is the one that I use on the Texumo that has no assisted bits and pieces. So it's a standard Texumo without any control boards or stabilization at all, just the two servos plugged directly into the radio receiver. If we look at how that's configured, it's set up for Elevon mixing. So the way it works is that the aileron and elevator channels are the two channels that no matter how I move the stick, they're the only ones that move. Hopefully you can see that on the screen. Now that's interesting because that's exactly how you would set your radio up to work with a flying wing. However, for this, you have to set up the radio in a more traditional way. So let me just show you how we've got this set up so this is going to work with the CC3D, even though we're putting it onto a flying wing with elevons. So here's the one we're going to use. If I jump into that same view, you'll see here that each control is actually moving its own setting. So the rudder's working, the elevator works, the aileron works and the throttle works and the mode switch works as well. You don't set up the radio for elevon mixing even if you're going to be using a CC3D on a flying wing. So now we've done that and we're aware of that and we have our model set up, let's plug that USB cable in and jump onto the netbook to install the firmware. So here we are in our netbook. We're in the OpenPilot ground station control software. If you haven't watched any of my other CC3D series, I'd recommend going back and watching the first couple because it explains in an awful lot more detail about how the OpenPilot GCS works. However, it's pretty straightforward and we're gonna go through the vehicle setup wizard to help us configure the board for what we need. If you're going to download this, then I'd go to openpilot.org and the download links are on the main page. You can get hold of this. It runs on lots of different platforms. The first thing we need to do is to plug our board into the computer. So I'll plug the USB cable in now. There's our connection. If it asks you to install a driver, just tell it not to look at the Windows repositories. That will speed up the installation an awful lot. So now we are ready for the vehicle setup wizard. Don't forget we have the throttle connected, but we don't have the servos. And we also have removed any props from the motor in case we have an uncommanded start of the speed controller. So we're going to click on vehicle setup wizard. It'll remind us that we want all those props removing and we have so we'll say next we would normally say erase all settings and upgrade i'm not going to on this board because i know it's the latest version and we're going through a demo but i'd always recommend doing that when you come to do it on your own model next we'll just confirm that that's the right one we'll tell it what kind of connection it has to the receiver we're going to go ppm because we're using one single three strand servo cable for all of our channels then we're going to tell it we want to put it on a fixed wing. Again, as we've looked at before, we can have lots of different multi-rotor types, surface vehicles, and even helicopters, but for now, we're going to go for a fixed wing. We're gonna click Next, and now it's gonna give us the options of what kind of plane we want to install the CC3D into. 
And this is where it starts to become really powerful because we can put it into something like this. So something like a Bixler, this configuration would work perfectly. It could be for a single aileron servo where there's one servo in the middle that controls each of the ailerons. It could be for something like a V-tail where rather than have a traditional rudder and elevator at the back, we have a V-tail configuration or we can just go for Elevon Mixing, which is our friend, the Flying Wing. Now we're gonna go for that one, so I'm gonna click Next. It's gonna ask us what kind of servos we're using on the craft. If you're using analog servos, you're gonna want the 50 hertz rate. If you're using nice, fast digital servos, you're going to want the 333 hertz rate. It's analog servos, I've got simple little analog nine gram servos in the wings here, so I'm gonna click Analog Servos and click Next. We can click on the connection diagram to see how we're supposed to wire it all up. And there's the one that we looked at before with channel one going to the left Elevon, channel two going to the right Elevon, and channel three being the throttle, which is how we are prepared to set it all up. So that looks great. Go into next. Okay, now we're going to calibrate where the motor starts to turn on. And again, absolutely important that we've removed all the propellers. So what we're going to do is click next and this is why having the speed controller is important at this point. Then we'd click start and we move this slider until the motor just starts to run and then we click on stop and that's told the CC3D where the motor start point is. We click next again and we want to do the output calibration for each of the servos. And again, personally, I don't like doing this and installing the servos until we've gone through this step. So I put the um, middle point and a minimum maximum position, click stop, go to next, do the same thing for the other one as well. Because we're going to plug the servos in and do this manually as the next step. You could do it here, but I found that if you do it like this before it's all configured, you can have some weird stuff happening. Next. We're going to select the current tuning, that's the only option we have, click next. We're going to save that configuration down to the board. Once it's done that, then it's going to want us to calibrate the transmitter. And this is why we had to have a radio with all the four controls set up individually rather than Elevon mixing. So we go through this just like we did at the beginning. So I'm going to go through this pretty quickly because it's relatively straightforward. It says, are you choosing acro or helicopter? We have acro. We're going to have mode two because my throttle's on the left. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to move each of the sticks in relation to what's moving on the screen. And we're just teaching the CC3D which is which. So we'll cancel out of that. The arming settings, we want to make sure that the, arm, the arming settings is something like your right, so you can both enable and disable the throttle. I, By default it says always disarmed, which caught me out the first time the, um, the default changed. You want it to be something like your right. If you fly quadcopters or tricopters, that's a very standard intuitive way to arm and disarm the board. So we're going to click save on all that. And now we can just run through and make sure that it all looks right. First of all, we're going to check that we have this bits and pieces set up. You can see that the main port is set for telemetry. I think it's good to have that because we can plug our Bluetooth adapter in when we install it into the plane to change things. Jump into vehicle. Absolutely right. There we go. We have an Elevon mix. The motor's channel 3. Elevon 1 and 2 is uh, on the right channels as well. Our inputs are all configured and set up. I would change the flight mode switch, however, to be these different flight modes. I would set up one of the basic modes to be rate all the way across, and that's the one that I would take off in. And that way it's just like flying the wing with an Elevon mix on the radio. And then you can flick it into other modes that give you attitude uh, control for things like the pitch and roll. So. I would always make sure that your basic mode that you always start on has rate set for all of them and then to have the other modes actually give you the stabilization. That way, if you go out and do a test flight, you can take it off manually, trim it, be happy with it, 
then hit the button for it to stabilize and if something weird's happening you can immediately drop back into rate mode and take control and fly it manually. Check the outputs. So the outputs for flying wing 1 and 2 is actually 50 hertz. Now that's fine for the throttle response and it's also fine for a standard ESC running something like a plane. So that all looks fine as well. And this is where I would now plug in my servos. And the reason I plug in my servos now is because the midpoint is set to 1500 and we have the two maximum points. I'd probably set that to 1900 at the top end and I would set the minimum to be something like a nice safe value like 1100. Click save. And now I plug my servos in. I'd probably plug the servos in without the linkages attached and just make sure that everything's all working and then try and sync up my linkages using the midpoint so that everything's at 90 degrees and then test the maximum deflection um, with the elevator and the aileron so that I'm getting the right movement and if I'm getting a little bit too much reduce the max and min and also if I'm getting too little increase the max and min to give you the throws that you want on your control surfaces. Now we've done all that we also just need to check that the attitude is all okay. We just need to level the board as one of the final things so it knows what level feels like and again this is very useful to run through again if you're going to be installing it into a plane and connecting via Bluetooth it might not be perfectly level and if we just jump into the flight controller pieces if I now tilt the nose down on the plane we should see it turn down if I tilt the nose up we should see it go up if I tilt the nose to the left we should see the horizon go in the opposite direction and vice versa and that all looks like the accelerometer is working perfectly Okay, the next thing we need to do then is to flick it into the mode that's going to provide the stabilization and then rock the craft left and right. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the control surface to come up and try and correct the uncommanded movement. So if we're tilting it to the left, we should see the right aileron come up and the left aileron come down and vice versa. And it won't go down a lot but just rock it from side to side and try and keep it level with your eyes and just see which way it's moving. If you find that they're not moving in the right configuration, then what you do is just go back to your outputs and you can reverse the channels that aren't behaving properly. And once you've done that, click save again. And at this point, we're ready to button up the model and to go out to the field and give it a test fly. So, I think it's time we did that next. Flying the wing has been a lot of fun and the CC3D flies it great in rate mode. But the problem I was having was that I couldn't quite get it to work in self-level. So at the beginning of October I asked for a bit of help from a number of subscribers because whenever I picked it into self-level mode it basically wouldn't respond to the radio. So thank you to everybody who gave us the answer. The answer is to do with the settings actually in OpenPilot. So what you have to do is when you've made your model is you just make sure obviously here we are looking at the wing again on the PC. You need to go into stabilization and here in stabilization you can see we've got moderate, snappy and insane. At the, down, at the moment we're down at moderate. What you have to do is if you're on a plane is you have to really ramp these up almost to the end of insane and each plane will be slightly different but this is the trick if you do this and save it at this level then it should be a lot more controllable when you go into auto level. So once you have it set up here make sure that you're all happy and then click on save.
Once you've got that running, then the auto level works really, really well. Flicking it into it will stabilize the craft. Occasionally have to do a little bit of tuning on the attitude, but it does mean that you can still will have control over it. So hopefully that helps those of you that are looking to fly CC3Ds in planes. Those are the tricks, but remember that last tip at the end about increasing the rates. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.